Hey guys, uh, welcome to episode 7 of this series where we build a web application using Rust. Uh, in our previous episode, we looked at how to build a CRUD API for our URL maps, which was our, our main data that we're storing in the database. Um, like I said in one of our previous episodes, uh, what we want to do is we don't want to expose our CRUD API a as a public API. We don't want anybody to access uh, the CRUD API and want the API to be protected. And so for that purpose, basically we'll look at how to create a middleware that allows us to do that. Uh, the approach that I'm going to take is going to be a very, very simplified one. However, I think we should be still be able to uh, see in, in detail how to actually utilize and leverage these uh, middlewares um, in, in a way that it makes really good sense. And then I think maybe uh, uh, towards, the, uh, towards the end, I think I'll also maybe talk a little bit de detail about how uh, this uh, can be made use of in, in actually a real world production ready application to, to you know, maybe cater to certain complex use cases. All right, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Um, so what we want is we want to add our uh, middleware, uh, but we want to protect only our API router. We don't want to protect our home route as well as the, the redirect route, right? We, we want those to still be available to the public. However, all our APIs, we want to protect those and put them behind some kind of authentication uh, so that uh, they, they are protected and so only certain specific users would be able to access it. Uh, so for that purpose, we'll be building the auth middleware. Um, the auth middleware uh, typically would look something like this. We name it uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, it takes in a request with a body and it must return a result with a request of body again. And uh, the way this works, and I think we've seen it in action a little bit for a logger menu. And the way it works is we must do some kind of protocol processing that is needed uh, on the request. And uh, this can be used for various use cases. This can be used to um, in, like add things to the request. For instance, you could add some header, things like that. Or obviously you can extract, look at some data from the request, process it, and uh, again, uh, do some kind of validation or verification. And that's what, exactly what we are going to do. Uh, what we're going to do essentially is we, we're going to look at the authorization header. We're going to look at that value, the value that is, exists within it, and we'll try to validate it in some way. And as long as it is valid, uh, we will basically forward the request so that it, it goes ahead in the middleware chain to the next middleware and then subsequent finally it will reach the route handler that that applies for it and uh, the right route would then be served um, as it should be however if our verification fails what we will do is we will return an error so that you know it gets halted here and uh, the client uh, would then be you know presented with an error saying you know hey, uh, i think you did something it's it's unauthorized access okay let's uh let's look at how we can do so basically, we would need a function such as uh, validate token, um, right? So what I'm going to do is within our authorization handle, I'm going to supply uh, an encoded token and we'll utilize basic secret encoding. Okay, and so we'll apply a encode. We'll supply an, an encoded token, and we try to uh, validate this. And if this is valid, we will basically return a. a uh, an atom sort of to indicate that it's been validated successfully however if that's not the case we'll be returning an appropriate error and that will help us uh, halt the execution uh, we obviously would need to use anyhow result to uh, nicely encapsulate the fact that we are going to have some errors uh, we also need to add this library uh, for Base 64 encoding decoding. Uh, I don't think we'll be doing any encoding today, but we'll just utilize uh, the decoding to actually deconstruct the uh, encoded data and then do validation on it. Uh, so let's just add it. Base 64. Right. Having added this, basically we will need to import uh, the decode function. 
And what we will need to do is uh, once we decode, we basically get a, a vector of bytes. Basically, we get a byte uh, from the encoded. Okay. And optionally, the decode, if you look at the API documentation, uh, it, it can result in a decode error, which means it was unable to decode the string. Once we decode uh, the string, it will be a result of a vector, basically a bunch of bytes. Uh, in order for us to convert the bytes back to string, what we can do is utilize the str package from standard library, and there's a function called from UTF-8. If we utilize this, and so what we can do is uh, we can get our auth token using the from UTF-8 function. Uh, by giving it the, the bytes. As you can see, this is also a result. Uh, it gives us an STR uh, or optionally a UTF-8 error. Um, so now that we have our auth token, uh, what we want to do is validate it in some way. And for the time being, what I'm going to do is we'll um, basically uh, set up a pre-configured auth token in our configuration and we'll just try to compare it to um, validate it in a maybe a slightly more complex application where let's say you have or managing user accounts as well there typically you would want to create uh, tokens for each user uh, one very commonly used in these days is uh, by using json web tokens short for jw in short they're known as jwt and uh, these are commonly used today now yeah like i said so what we will do is we will uh let's let's go to our config so we will try to improve our config and uh, perhaps we will just add a pre-configure our token in our thing let this be a string let's go to our default config and here basically i'll add my auth token just using a random garbage string uh it's simple enough but because it's long it, it makes it slightly secure because obviously nobody can just guess it um so we'll the, we'll try to compare it with this uh so we need to import the hyper and uh, we need to import our context Now all we need to do is uh, check hey, if our auth token is not equal to our config auth token. Now this is an str, where is this um, string? So we can use as str, and we can use as str for comparison. And now if they are not equal, basically it's, uh, it represents uh, the fact that it's not valid. So we will return with an error. Let's just use anyhow's uh, um, anyhow macro to return a, an error. Mm, and now that we have this, now we have a way to validate our token. Now we'll try to uh, basically uh, do the actual uh, middleware bit where we'll first have to extract the token from the headers and then do something. So our auth token header is going to come from the request and so that we can do by calling the headers function. This gives us a header map. So from the map then we can go ahead and extract the value for the header authorization. That's the one we are going to rely on. And as you can look at the get API, it basically uh, it gives us an option of type T, uh, which means it can either have some value or it can be completely empty, indicating that the, the header is basically missing. There is no value. Uh, so let's try and match on this and, and we'll, we'll, we'll basically look at both these edge cases. So the first simple edge case is if if it's none, which means it just doesn't exist. So the header doesn't exist at all. Uh, in this case, we want to return an error. So we will say 
can utilize the animals macro. Right. And however, if we do happen to get the auto token, now we need to do something to validate the auto token. You can see this is basically a header value, and also we need to look at uh, what we can do with this. So our token essentially is going to be yeah, so we utilize the two string method. Uh, however, if you notice, this basically gives us a result uh, because there may be an error. We'll simply um, power the uh, error if there exists and we'll capture the string. So now that we have a string, we can basically call a validate token on this. And this also returns a result. We will utilize the question mark thing again. So if there is an error, we forward the error. Otherwise, we proceed to the next one, and all we need to do is basically forward the request. And so this will ensure that um, if there is an error at any stage, we basically respond back with an error. Otherwise, at the end, if everything goes through successfully, we just basically proceed with the same request, and the next uh, middleware in the chain, or the, eventually the, the route handler, which is applicable for this, would process it and then do its thing. Now let's just uh, settle up for this. We use the middleware uh, API, and so what we do is uh, we use the middleware pre uh, API to set up our auth middleware because this needs to be this needs to happen before the actual routes uh, are called. Uh, we have to import middleware as well. We need router and we need middleware. So this should be good. So yeah, I think I think we are probably already ready to see this in action. Let's uh, let's see. Let's run our app and we'll switch to our uh, nice little uh, curl interface <laughs> within them. Now that our app is running, let's just hit the API. But I'll let this guy be open so that you can see the logs here. So uh, yeah, we get a 200 for the main cloud and then our slash key route. Okay, this gives us 303 so we are able to successfully redirect now when we hit our api uh okay, yeah you can see here uh, we get unauthorized access so we basically get a 500 internal error that's because of the way that we are uh, handling errors um so 500 in this case is not uh, an appropriate uh, appropriate uh status code um, we should be returning with 401 uh which is the uh, HTTP status code for saying hey uh, we are unauthorized uh, and so let's let's see how we can do that let's uh, let's see how we can do that so when we go to our main router we'll see basically we have a generic error handler and this is exactly what, what kicks in you know when there is an error is encountered and as you can see basically we have a hard coded status uh, internal server error that we are uh, always responding with so now what we'll do is maybe we'll try to uh, you know Look at the error that we receive and we will we, we'll do a slight um a match on it and then we'll have two edge cases you know one for one we'll send an unauthorized error and for the other we'll send the internal server uh so what we can do is we can convert this to a string and then we can call as string to get an str and then i'll do and so once we have this uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a match on this um because basically this gives us uh, the str so we match on different cases uh, the main case for us is i don't know if it's unauthorized access then uh we want to send the high uh, the status word paper uh, status unauthorized and for anything else we want to still continue sending the uh, internal server so yeah uh, so this way we basically get our status um and we'll be able to respond back with the appropriate error um, i see it's running we can move that make that code a slightly better and let's get back to yeah the error handle uh, the one thing i would like to say of course is you know uh, here we are um in doing a little bit i would say this is a little bit hacked because we are trying to compare on the error message and then trying to 
to a certain different edge cases based on that. Uh, the more idiomatic approach would be to create um, custom error and then try to match on that. Probably like build a custom enum. And there's a library called this error uh, with a create called this error. Well, this error, yeah. Uh, this is, the, I would say, you know, one of the preferred choices to create a generic uh, error type like, uh, like this, for example, right? And there you can have different kinds of errors and then those you can use to indicate, you know, specific error that might happen. However, I mean, that would require us to change uh, all of our APIs and to return uh, uh, this error instead of the anyhow error that we are dealing with right now. So to avoid a lot of, uh, a lot of that, we basically just do a string comparison for now, just to get the, you know, the ball rolling um let's see i uh, let's uh, run this again you know since we've made changes so our app is up and running let's look at the main routes these are supposed to be public we should be able to access them without any authorization but when we hit the url map we see that we get an http 401 unauthorized so that's awesome that's, that's what we wanted now let's see how we can actually make uh, you know, set up the authorization header and make a call, validate ourselves, and then finally get the uh, the, the call to pass through and actually give uh, deliver us the data that we need. Uh, so for that, let's look at the let's look at the config. And default config. So this is the string that we set up, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll copy this string. And I'm going to use uh, uh, echo with hyphen in, which means they, a, there'll be no new line. And I'll just basically use uh, base64 to import this. And I'll also uh, use PBC, which is an alias I use. Uh, basically, it'll copy it to our clipboard, uh, which should be done now. Um, let's come back to our listing. But we need the authorization header, and we we'll put the value here. So let's see this API. Yeah. So with the authorization, we're able to get our data and just to see the other APIs, um, they're still giving us more output without the authorization. And when we look at the publicly available ones, when we look at those, great, we are getting exactly what we, what we should. Yeah. Um, as you can see, uh, it, it is obviously a very, very simplified approach. However, this is something that you can easily extend uh, for to, you know, to build a slightly more complex system. And yeah, and this is the way we can protect our APIs. Um, the nice thing is, uh, you know, because of the way it's composable, we can attach the middleware um, anywhere in our chain um, in, of uh, the builders that we're building. and it would apply only to the builder that we built. So here in this case, you know, we have applied it to the API builder and so it applies only to our APIs. It does not um, um, disturb our public domain APIs. And uh, that's exactly what we need. So yeah, I think that'll be all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much.